Good evening. It's Thursday, December 28th. I'm Mike Witch. Welcome to The Local Live. As we wind down the year, we want to thank our incredible volunteers, our producers, interns, and students. With their help, we've produced nearly 200 shows. Tonight, we reprise the best of The Local Live through 2017. First up, the inspiring story of Larchmont Girl Scouts who helped organize Walk and Roll, a fundraiser to get one of their members a wheelchair ramp. Hello, this is Aurora folks, and today we're here at the Larchmont Girl Scout home celebrating Olivia's way with her grand opening of her new handicap ramp. Troop leaders Daisy and Junior Scouts all gathered here for the grand reveal of a handicap ramp, one that would elevate and lift the spirits of a very special little girl. I am so excited for this day and so excited that you're all here. While this day served as an exciting one for Patricia and those who helped fund the year-long project, Polly and Dan Vanderwood couldn't be happier for their daughter Olivia. It just is amazing to me what she's been able to, you know, accomplish in her seven years of life. And while Olivia cannot speak, I'm confident she would want me to say how much it means to her to be included. She's looking forward to many adventures with the Girl Scouts. No longer subject to the exclusion of outdoor events, Olivia can now take part in every cookie bake and craft event in the Girl Scout house, much to her fellow Daisy members' joy. I feel great because when she didn't come in the Girl Scouts house, she, we had to go somewhere else, and now we have a ramp. We, we all can come in the Girl Scouts house and be in a group. With the festivities continuing inside, veteran Girl Scouts and troop leaders alike were able to reflect on the fundraiser's success and the strides the organization has taken since March of 1912. The Girl Scouts were there to support all needs of girls and what's more important than being friends. This has been a beautiful event here at the Larchmont Girl Scout House. We look forward to seeing more of what they can do. And this has been Aurora Folk supporting. John's Crazy Socks, a company founded by father and son duo John and Mark Cronin, wowed Mamaroneck residents with their unique business proposal. Our reporter, Christy Capiello, brought us the story. I wear socks, socks, sock, more socks. <laughs> This was the business proposal of young entrepreneur John Cronin to his father Mark when inspiration struck to start an online sock company. After graduating high school at age 21, John and his family researched postgraduate opportunities for disabled adults. When John proposed John's Crazy Socks, Mark saw a valuable opportunity, not only in business, but in pioneering a business that creates job opportunities for disabled adults like his son. Now, you have Down syndrome, right? I do. Does that hold you back? That did not never hold me back. Right? Does it stop you from doing anything? No. Okay. And John couldn't be more correct. John's Crazy Socks opened for business on December 9th, 2016, less than a year ago today, and has already earned $1.2 million in revenue. The Cronins attribute their success to their company mission, which says it all. I was bringing happiness to socks. Right. The Cronins shared their business model and story with residents of Mamaroneck on Tuesday evening at the Building Bridges event at Homics Middle School and even brought a special surprise. Custom designed by John's Crazy Socks just for our district so we can all wear our Tiger Pride. To support the Cronins' mission and get your own Crazy Socks, visit www.johnscrazysocks.com. St. Baldrick's Brave, the shave campaign, struck gold this year at Molly Spillane's in Mamaroneck. Xavier Campo was there to catch the action. This is Xavier Campo, and we are here at Mamaroneck for the first annual St. Baldrick's Foundation's Brave, the Shave, Head Shaving Fundraiser. Members of our community showed compassion and solidarity for children who are battling childhood cancer by shaving their heads last Saturday. Let me ask you, Phil, how does it feel to get your head shaved right now? Well, for a good cause, it feels great. Stephen Cardi, the owner of Molly Spillane's, has been hosting the Brave the Shave event at Mickey Spillane's in Eastchester for several years. And he has now brought this cause to the Mamaroneck community. It goes back about eight years ago in Mickey Spillane's in Eastchester. I started running this event. And in those eight years, we raised over 300,000 for kids' cancer research. All over the Spillane group, which is Mickey's, Molly's, Maggie's, given to where we're living. We believe in that. In the U.S. alone, more children die from cancer than any other childhood diseases. 
But with the money raised from St. Baldrick's Foundation for Cancer Research, they hope for new treatments. Ten-year-old Margie Sheeker, a resident of Larchmont, is a cancer survivor. She was the honored guest of the event. Now I feel so great that I'm out of the hospital. You are a champion. To all the support, especially the guy was giving me, saying that I'm his hero and saying I'm really lucky, I thought that that was pretty nice. Cancer doesn't discriminate. And it can touch all of us, and so I just think it's important to stay a part of the community and accept help and love from others. I think when it comes to events like this, I always think of a Tony Robbins quote, that the secret to living is giving. And I, I would do this every day and twice on Sunday for free. Since 1999, the St. Baldrick's head shaving event has grown nationwide, raising more than $200 million. Hairstylists from the Lemon Tree in Mamaroneck donated their time and positive energy at this fundraiser. So this was at least six months planning in the works, getting all the committee together, getting people to sign up, getting all the barbers, just everything in the works. A lot of time, a lot of effort. The St. Bulgic's Foundation believes every child should not only survive, but thrive. So a very special thanks to Molly Spillanes, the community of Mamaroneck, and all the people who came out to shave their heads and raise a, over a whopping $25,000 for tonight's event. This is Xavier Campbell for The Local Live, signing off. Fred Berger, the producer of La La Land, who got an early taste of movie making while a Mamaroneck High School student and a volunteer at LMC TV, sat down with Kat Galliano to give us an exclusive interview. So why did you decide to, to make movies? Like why is film your passion? Why did that call to you? You know, there's a lot of seminal moments that I think are sort of combined uh, to create this burning desire at some point. And one of them, I just always loved movies, but that was more as a fan. Then I took photography here, and that made me sort of see through what was just an image and understand it uh, in a deeper way and make me appreciate it. And I still love cinematography. And then I did editing and video with Mr. Witch, and that was like, I want to oh, I want to wow. be doing this. And he that, actually hosts our, our show. No yeah, way. Can, yeah. you tell, can you say hello to him? Because Absolutely. he was a huge influence, too. Yes. And so that gave me the bug to sort of, I was like, I just need to be a part of this in any way possible. So I started, you know, taping bar mitzvahs and started working for LMC TV. And I remember distinctly, you know, directing the Halloween episode. And I was, and I felt like I helped arrange the set and the choreography and the whole thing. And I was directing, you know, camera one to camera three and wide and pushing in. And I was trying to, you know, make it <laughs> ambitious and artistic as much as I could. And the more you, you know this, and this is why you guys are doing what you're doing, is the more you get a taste of the thing that feels unattainable and making art feels impossible. Because you know how to go to law school, you know how to go to business school, you know how to be a doctor. And those are all challenging and, and gratifying in different ways, but there's a path. Making movies feels completely amorphous and, and untenable. So I just kept getting my hands on things that made me feel part of it. And then Dr. De Janeiro sort of made me understand that movies operated on a different level than what I was experiencing. And the more I got into that idea, and the same time that Aronofsky was starting to make movies, mm -hmm. and Spike Jones and all these directors that kind of embody that idea of movies as more than just something as superficial entertainment. And so that collision of the 90s, which was an amazing decade for movies, and people who taught you to sort of look at them more actively, mm -hmm. just I just was like, I need to do it. You know when you're editing something, and you don't even realize you just pulled two all-nighters because you want to make it perfect. <laughs> I'll do really with that. You know, they say if you find uh, something you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's, yeah. I, I don't stop working. And luckily, I love what I do um, because I never I never sort of want to turn it off. So I'm very lucky. Oh, my God. Ugh, I'm, like, floored by you right now. But I want to talk about <laughs> LMC because you can't, I can't even begin to tell you what it felt like to read the journal news and scream my head off as I'm coming home from oh. class and being like, oh, my God, what? So please tell us like what your best memory was, how you got involved with LMC. Like that is huge for us, huge for our volunteers and our interns and everyone really. It's just, it's that you even shouted us out and we didn't even know. Oh, so please well, tell us like what your best memory sweet. is. That's very sweet. Like I was saying, it's a big part of why I'm doing what I'm doing because you start to get uh, just more and more of the bug because you start doing it, even in a more limited way, in a more local way. And I had this sense that maybe a lot of people weren't necessarily watching what I was doing, mm -hmm. but that's the best time to sort of practice, you know, mm -hmm. and sort of figure out what you're good at. And because when you're young, everything feels not only impossible, but you don't even know where your place is in the whole thing. You don't even understand mm -hmm. what the various jobs mean other than actor and director. Um, and so it just gave me a chance to kind of hone my skills and realize that like putting 
images together in a certain sequence and combining that with uh, actors and people it is, was, was exhilarating. And I think that, that Halloween special I remember so vividly because it <laughs> felt like directing. I felt like I had some influence. And then there was some parade that I hosted that was near Emlyn Theater um, that I was like both the host and then edited it together. And, and there's a pride, you know, what, you know what it's like when you're part of something that you do show to people and you're proud of how it comes out. And sometimes you're, you want it to be better, but sometimes you're like, you want to show your family and your friends and you, when people see it and they're in any way affected by it, yes. it's like a, a little sugar high that you just want more of, you know? And Elm City TV was awesome. It paid, it paid for my, you know, lunch money and it was also taught me that I, I liked, you know, that this is something I shouldn't give up. It's not just a little hobby, but something I should pursue. Also this year, Maura Carlin got a chance to talk with the Tourette's Association of New York, Hudson Valley Chapter. Yeah. I mean, they say that um, with Tourette, Ticks are just the tip of the iceberg. Can you explain what that means? Yes. For many kids, you know, t the ticks are really just a neurological marker for many associated challenges that go along with it. And most kids don't have just Tourette. A good proportion have co-occurring ADHD, you know, attention deficit disorder, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, learning issues, sleep issues, um, executive functioning issues, you know, trouble with organizational skills, and you know, it's really important, particularly for their teachers and educators, to understand that it's not just the ticks interfering with what their day at school. There's all these other associated um, symptoms that may be misperceived as misbehaviors, but there's actually a you know neurological basis to it, and it's really important to address all the challenges. And many parents will tell me that the tics are not the most challenging symptom that their child has. It's the ADHD um, you know, or the anxiety that gets more in their way on a day-to-day -day basis. So how do you address Tourette and its um, comorbid okay. conditions? Okay. Well, you know, medication is no longer considered the first line of intervention. And most kids diagnosed with Tourette are not on medication. Um, the best prescription is social support. So part of what the chapter does as you know, Matt, as a youth ambassador, going into school and educating the peers, and there are specialists who go into the schools and educate the teachers and allied professionals of how to understand what the child is experiencing and how to best support them and their learning in the classroom. And I found that very helpful for me and the kids that I have presented for because, like I said before, it helped my life, and I have helped other, many other kids' lives, and they've said to me, and they've also became youth ambassadors because of that. So it does really play a role in everyone's life who you present to. Last month, I got a chance to interview Amanda Lucidon, the White House photographer, to Michelle Obama during her tenure as First Lady. We were at the Voracious Reader bookstore in Larchmont talking about her new book, Chasing Light. Amanda Lucidon is an award-winning documentarian, photographer, and multimedia storyteller. During her time at the White House, she was the only female photographer on staff. She's one of the few women in history to serve as an official White House photographer. This is her first book, and she was at the Voracious Reader in Larchmont on Wednesday, November 29th. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and you've got 200-some pictures in here. What would, what would be some of the words that would spring into your mind as you leave through some of these pictures. Mm -hmm. Intimate, candid, authentic. Um, I, I think just the, it shows the layers of Mrs. Obama. I hope it shows um, a side that people haven't had the opportunity to see before and, and uh, highlights all the work that was done. Picture, they were posed, and then I put my camera down. You know, you just took two pictures, put my camera down. And then just right after that, she just grabbed them in tight for a big bear hug. <laughs> and then I picked my camera back up and took a couple more pictures. And I like these ones better. <laughs> and she agrees. She always loved the candid photos, too. And one of the coolest compliments is um, one day I was working in the Oval Office, and I saw this picture um, behind the Resolute desk at the President's office. <laughs> so <laughs> I did a, you know, a quiet fist bump. And I was like, yes, he likes it. <laughs> Francine Lucidon, the owner of Voracious Reader, told us how she got Amanda to her shop. First of all, she's my cousin, so she had to come. 
Um, and I also told her publicist, the interesting thing is she's not been scheduled to go to any small bookstores in the country, any bookstores at all. She's going to libraries, she's going to schools, she's going to really big venues. But I said, hey, she's a Lucidon, I'm a Lucidon, we have to get her here, we'll bring in the crowds, we'll sell the books, please let Amanda come. I will work really hard to fill the, fill the store and have a fabulous event. And it all worked out amazingly. And it's a standing room only crowd the other night at the Voracious Reader in Larchmont. Everyone here to meet Amanda Lucidon, photographer and author of Chasing Light. In observation of LGBT Pride Month, our guests at the Local Lives Roundtable explained what it's like to be transgender in Westchester. It seems, Shepard, that a lot of youth these days are declaring themselves to be trans or queer or there are other terms that they use yeah. and you, you meet them all the time at the loft. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the kids? Yeah, that's a, that's a very common question. Um, uh, people all the time ask us, you know, what is, is transgender like a, trend, a trendy thing, you know, to just be nowadays with youth? You know, people want attention and that's what they're doing. But it's really, it's really invalidating when, that's, when that language is, is spoken, especially if like somebody who's recently come out hears something like that. Uh, transgender, being transgender is not trendy. Um, having an LGBTQ identity is not a trendy thing to do. Uh, as Kim was saying, it can be. It can be a very challenging thing. Uh, the reason that more and more people, that we're seeing more and more people talking about transgender issues and, and talking about being transgender is just simply because the language we use to describe ourselves has expanded so much recently. And now we have terms that we never had before. So we have terms to describe how some people were feeling historically all along. And uh, you know, our culture, our LGBT culture, shows that in, in some of our you know, uh, historic figures and, mm -hmm. and, and role models is that you know, we, can't, we can't identify anybody who's never you know, come out as something. We would never do that. We would never put a label on anybody. But gender fluidity has always been present in the LGBT community, in non-LGBT communities, um, and now we, we simply have terms that we can use that mean what we feel. And for that reason, we're seeing more and more people coming out. It's also safer now, relatively speaking. Climate has changed and social acceptance is, is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yes, there are more people coming out as trans, but it doesn't make it the cool thing, you know. Larchmont the movie was released this year. The film is a relatable and humorous take on life in the village. And we got a chance to talk to hometown filmmakers Ben Zuckert and Will Seif. How's your penmanship? Still terrible. That's what I thought. My cursive is impeccable. I think you gotta let me write this. It's a simple story. A young man back home after graduating from college worries about his future. At the same time, his father, a successful lawyer, frets that the neighbors will find out he's lost his job. Family and friends, as well as most locations, are all Larchmont, according to Ben Zuckert, who wrote the screenplay and directed the film, his first feature. The hometown crowd at the Emelin really liked this movie. Zuckert and cinematographer Will Seif heard several compliments in an extended Q&A session with film educator Michael De Gennaro. Uh, it was great. It was a really uh, nice audience, and I think people had a good time and laughed at the right places. So, Will, what do you think? Yeah, we were camped out in the back, and I think uh, really, really great reception. It was really nice to have Larchmont seat. Zuckert and Seif are graduates of the Maranek High School, and so is their mutual friend, Will Jacobs, who acts in the film. Watch Larchmont at home with Vimeo On Demand. You can rent it for $5 or own it for $10. you will find the story engaging, the characters true to life, and the locations very familiar. Reporting for The Local Live, I'm Mike Witch. The village of Mamaroneck held its annual Fireman's Parade in July, celebrating its 70th anniversary. The turnout along the Maranek Avenue was immense. Our reporter, Marcella Milder, was among those cheering.
Welcome to the 70th Annual Fireman's Parade, which kicks off a week filled with carnival rides, games, food, and fireworks. We're here bringing you the full coverage of one of Mamaroneck's biggest events. So let's go see what all the hype's about. This year brought a large turnout with over 30 different fire departments marching. The former chief, David Vaughn, acted as officiator, announcing each division in this year's parade. This parade has been going on since the 40s, I believe, and it is probably one of the highlights of the entire village of Mamaroneck throughout the course of the year. We have an all-voluntary fire department in Mamaroneck. Everyone may not know that. Many municipalities in the Sound Shore community have career drivers, and they're backed up by volunteers. Other Sound Shore communities are totally career. The village of Mamaroneck counts on you to come out and help us out as an all-volunteer department. Residents and guests came out to celebrate this special event, participating not only in the parade, but in the Fireman's Carnival, which helps raise money from Ameronek's volunteer fire department. We give them a lot of credit. They put their lives on the line every day for us, and we have to give them a lot of credit for what they do for us, and we should be very thankful that we have such a great volunteer uh, department in the village of Ameronek. It's a beautiful night. It brings everybody outside. It, it gives everybody a, a spirit of camaraderie. We see people we haven't seen in a long time, make connections. It's, 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 this is small town America. This is what it's all about. The firemen and women looked excited as they rep their towns and villages. Go Ryan! Go, Go Perkins! Go Terrytown! I just joined. They're all very, very welcoming and very nice and it's like a big family. I love it. It probably started off, you know, as the whole brother thing. You know, we're all volunteer fire department and I think we're one of the strongest, you know, volunteer fire departments around, so it's nice, you know. Lord Carnival is uh, one of the fundraisers that we have to support the department and we thank everybody um, and we appreciate everybody being here tonight. The day quickly turned into night as the festivities continued, but all parade goers knew the real reason for attendance wasn't the entertainment, but to say thank you to our firemen. Go firemen! Go firemen! It's very important to celebrate them because uh, they help save lives. I love our firemen! We love, we love our firemen. firemen! What do we have to say to our firemen, guys? Thank you! We're looking forward to next year's parade. For the local live, I'm Martella Milder. The food truck and maker's market was a wild success this year. Attendees raved about the variety of flavors and assortment of craft goods. Our local live reporter, Ian Sachs, took us right there. Who's hungry? It looks like the whole town of Mamaroneck was here at the Mamaroneck Food Truck and Maker's Market. Just look at this line lining up for the world's famous Walters. About six food trucks here today and about a dozen makers and creative people filling out the streets here and everybody's showing up. I'm actually from New York originally, but I live in Colorado for the last four and a half years, so it's nice to be back. And one of the things that bring me back is, is food in general. I'm a sucker for simple foods like pizza, burgers, ice cream. Everyone in attendance got exactly what they wanted to eat from the likes of Mamaroneck's famous Walters hot dogs to gyros, burgers, wood fire pizza, Mexican food, and ice cream. The variety brought a lot of praise from the attendees. It's a great idea. It's a great way to bring the community together, for one. And food. Everybody loves food. You know, I think it's just a fun event to have in town, and I'm very excited. The local vendors displayed their creativity and artistry, showing off their own products, ranging from jewelry such as bracelets bracelets, necklaces and earrings, to paintings, dream catchers, canvas bags, print screens, a cookbook, clothing, and even glitter tattoos. With so many craftspeople lining the streets, the community's interest in local businesses was fully on display. I'm very, very excited about the output of this event because it shows really like the community really wants this and wants to support it. Uh, and it's also not just a one person thing, this is definitely a collaboration. While the main focus concentrated on the vendors and their talents, some of the younger participants showed off their creative side. Children seized the opportunity to decorate the street, and teens took the stage as members of Mamaroneck's School of Rock. Streetside was where LMC TV broadcast the event live on television and the internet. In the past, the station has produced live town meetings, but the food truck and maker's market was the first mobile event the station broadcast live. 
it's been really fun. I mean, you can see people come up and go, oh, what's that? It can be on TV, you know, and that's really what we want to do, to be that presence in the community where people can come to us and, like you said, get their message out there and have a fun time doing it. Well, after fighting off all those crowds back there, I had to finally take a seat and relax. For the local live, I'm Ian Sachs. Next up, a story from our youngest reporter, 12-year-old Lindsley Barrios. She covered the fourth annual Light Up Larchmont event. Happy holidays, everyone. It's an amazing night here at Light Up Larchmont. My name's Lindsley Barrios. I'm reporting from Constitution Park, and I can't wait to show you all the fun things that are going to happen tonight. At the fourth annual Light Up Larchmont celebration, our community came out for a night of caroling, hot cocoa, donuts, arts and crafts, and of course they came to see Santa and the tree lighting. So I'm here with Kaylin, so I'm going to ask her a few questions. So what is the true meaning of Christmas for you? I think it's love, family, expand more time with family. I think it's the most important. We also spoke with George Latimer and we asked him what he thinks about this event. I don't think I'm going to get on Santa Claus's lap, but all the little children, and I guess at my age, the grandchildren, get to enjoy it. So it's, it's really a good time, and it, it really amplifies the hometown feeling of Archmont. So I'm here at the Arts and Crafts section. Um, so as you can see, there's many people gathering around to do some nice festive um, decorations. So let's go. What did, so what did you make tonight? Um, I'm a reindeer. And what kind of, what did you use for your reindeer? A nose. The holiday spirit fills Constitution Park to the tunes of Christmas songs. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle sadly coming to an end, but the holidays are just starting. We will come back to you with more local news this season. We hope all our local live viewers are having a happy holidays. And remember, don't forget to leave cookies for Santa. Happy holidays, guys! Lindsley is a delightful and energetic reporter, a real promising journalist. So last month, we turned our spotlight on her. Now this week in the spotlight, we highlight the 2017 Ragamuffin Parade in the village of Larchmont that took place last Saturday. And our little Lindsley was there. Tell us everything, Lindsay. How was it? It was amazing experience for me. I had lots of fun and so many people, believe it or not, came to our LMC TV booth and talked to me. Without further ado, making her debut as our youngest reporter, here is Lindsley Berrios. My name is Lindsay Barrios. I'm 12 years old and I go to Homics Middle School. I'm in seventh grade. Uh, I plan on being a TV journalist. I've been here for about a month and a half and I've done so many different things. I've learned how to work with camera. I've learned how to edit. I've learned, I've anchored the show with two stories so far. Um, and I worked at election night, which was really cool. I think I've learned so many new things here at LMC TV and the local live. I continue to learn more and I hope my brain has enough space for that. I think I'm definitely going to stick with this because it's something that I'm really going to set my heart to and it's something that I really care about. I tell them to definitely come here to take a chance to keep following their dreams and it doesn't matter what other people say, just keep doing what you want to do and with the help of LMC TV and the local live you'll eventually get there. Another of our youth reporters is Chloe Malushaga. She wanted to find out what made Walter's hot dog so popular. Here's that story. America loves its hot dogs. From the ball game, to the beach, to the backyard, to the barbecue, the hunt for the top dog has kept on for decades. But the surge is finally over. Look no further than the Chinese pagoda here at Walter's hot dog stand in Mimarinic home to what many claim is America's finest Frank. Walters was founded in 1919 by Walter Warrington. 
Since moving to their location on Palmer Avenue in 1928, Walters has become a hot spot for Frank fanatics all over Westchester, not to mention a nationally registered historical landmark. 98 years later, the line still stretches all the way down the sidewalk. So we decided to ask a few of the customers why they keep coming back. They're really, really good. Because they are yummy. A plain hot dog. It's just the best. <laughs> Was it yummy? Yeah. Best hot dogs on the planet. I like them because they're small and you can eat them quickly. I love lots the hot dogs. All right, all right, we get it. They're good. But what exactly makes these hot diggity dogs so dog darn delish? Maybe it's the way they're sliced in half and grilled to perfection. Or is it that extra crunch the evenly toasted bun gives it? Perhaps it's the buttery sauce they're grilled in. The rosy pink color of the wieners themselves. Maybe it's their trademark mustard. Turns out, it's just the secret family recipe. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that the, the hot dog is our own recipe. It's a blend of beef, pork, and veal, and the mustard is our recipe as well. No doubt have these dogs marked their territory here in Mimernik. And now, after nearly a century of success, they're finally expanding. White Plains is proud to welcome the second Walters establishment, located at 186 Mimernik Avenue. The great thing about our food trucks is it allows us to test markets by going out to different areas. And we've noticed from the very beginning that White Plains uh, was in high demand. So we thought that opening up a lo location in White Plains would be great uh, due to the demand. And we'd also be able to attract customers from Rockland County and Northern Westchester as well. So, you know, everything will stick to the Walters tradition. We'll, the menu will be our classic items. We are going to be open late night to, you know, serve the, the bar and restaurant scene on the avenue. We're also going to focus heavily on you know, the lunch crowd and the dinner crowd, the offices in the area, um, we're going to be doing Uber Eats delivery, which we also do at our location in Mamaronek and on our food truck. So I think we'll definitely get a good crowd of people. I think people, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to want, you know, their Walter's hot dog. It's, you know, it's a treat. Maybe they don't have it too often or, or maybe they're a regular. Or maybe they're a new customer. You, you need a Walter's hot dog every now and then. That's for sure. Well, Looks like these hot dogs got a whole lot going on. For the local live, I'm Chloe Molly Shaga. In February, Kat Galliano went down to Madison Kitchen to talk food with Chef Nick DeBona. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, I decided to take myself out on a date right here at Madison Kitchen. Mmm, delicious. Located at 7 Madison Avenue in Larchmont, Madison Kitchen stands out not only in their location, but in their dishes. We spoke to Nick DeBona, owner, head chef, and winner of Food Network's Chop TV show about his one great love, food. Well, I mean, I think like anything, you just have to have a passion for what you do. This is, I'm automatically drawn to food. This is who I am. I literally express myself through food. It's just funny. You know, my father's from Italy. I grew up with food. Food was like a big thing in our, uh, in our house and it just kinda, I got stuck with it. When Chef DeBona isn't busy making up new recipes, he's creating different kinds of homemade ice creams and milkshakes, which he calls Bona Bona, a play on his last name. We've been open for three and a half years now, and from day one, I was making homemade ice cream here. It got recognized from the New York Times when we got reviewed. The very last sentence in the review was how good the ice cream is. So I, I saw that and I ran with it and I started branding my own ice cream and you know milkshakes were trending and they were all the news so I just started making milkshakes here and it just kind of blew up. If you're still undecided on where to take your valentine, Madison Kitchen is the place for you. With a special menu available for the occasion, it's a perfect place to eat your heart out. So yeah, I'd just like to welcome everybody to the restaurant to enjoy our uh, Valentine's Day menu. Valentine's Day is on Tuesday but we are celebrating with our prefix menu from Saturday. Um, we're closed Sunday, so Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, we will be offering our Valentine's Day shake, our Valentine's Day pasta, as well as other things that are on our prefix. For someone as accomplished as Chef DeBona, I asked what advice he'd give to those wanting to pursue a culinary career. I think you just have to follow your heart, you know. Um, if you want to do something, you just got to strive and do it. For Chef Nick DeBona, Food is not his passion, food is his life. 
and we leave here as super fans. For The Local Live, I'm Kat Galliano. School of Rock is the performing music school that husband and wife Tori and Vanessa Ritter had always dreamed of. In February, we featured their business in our spotlight. Today I'm here in the Maronic at School of Rock! And we're going to make some noise. Woo! School of Rock in the Maronic is a result of the love story of Tori and Vanessa Ritter. They say it's a dream come true. Years ago when Tori and I were in college, we were in a band and we took traditional music lessons when we were younger and uh, when we learned about School of Rock and discovered it later on in life after we were married and we had kids of our own, we thought what an awesome idea to bring to this community a school that would have inspired us to be even better musicians. Located at One Depot Plaza in Mamaroneck, School of Rock brings a community of rockers together where age is merely a number. Well, my experience at School of Rock is like really fun and like I learn a lot of stuff and I'm like, like my teachers are really nice to me. School of Rock has been a great experience for me. I'm able to increase my voice range and my skill of singing and also playing guitar. School of Rock is a performance-based musical school that has over 150 locations operating all over the world. But aside from the fun environment, the students have the chance to learn about teamwork and confidence. It's really like transformed me as a person, like I've gained so much confidence as a person and like I'm so much more sure of myself now and it's really changed me. Vanessa Reeder says that it's never too late to rock. But what makes the School of Rock different from other music schools in our community? We're distinct because we're performance based. We focus really on bringing kids from the lesson room to the stage, and we believe that the stage is the greatest teacher for them. Enough talking, let's hear the students do what they do best. And the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we'll see. Cause after all this time, I'm still into you. I definitely think it's a great opportunity to come out and try out and see what School of Rock is all about. At School of Rock, anyone can become a rock star, and I just found my band. For the local life, this is Shayla Navarro, signing off. Where can you find a cascading waterfall and beautiful food? The local live reporter Alexandria Garcia explains why Mamaronek's Red Plum Sushi Restaurant might be your next destination. Are you looking for a new place to dine in Mamaronek? If so, then come to Red Plum, which specializes in crafting skillfully prepared Asian cuisine to only delight your palate. At Red Plum, you will encounter excellent service, both at the dining and bar area. At the bar, you can find a variety of wine and liquor at your disposal, as well as a unique hibachi area that first welcomes its visitors with a dazzling waterfall. Back at the bar, bar manager Jackie Bender made us a delicious lychee martini. And why do you think Red Plum is so different and unique? than other Asian restaurants here on Mamaroneck Avenue. I think we put a lot of effort into, you know, getting to know our customers really well, okay. on a, even on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Like, and we start to, we really, like I said, we really care about people in the community. A lot of people know us. I call it like the Asian cheers, okay. because most of our customers are repeat and they're local. And I think we have a lot of community support. The Mamaroneck community also loves their fresh sushi that is unlike any other. We have snow crab and shrimp tempura. Also, we have mango and shrimp special sauce. It'll be spicy. Okay. That's safe. Very good. We serve like a Chinese, Japanese, and Thai food. Also, we have a hibachi style. Hibachi style. Yes. And how popular has been the hibachi? I think the most is popular like a family and uh, for children. Most we do have a lot of kids party here. While at the hibachi area, the chef wasted no time in preparing the steak, chicken, lobster, and noodles for my plate. I couldn't wait to taste it. I definitely recommend the hibachi at Red Plum. It's actually a pleasure just eating all this food that the chef made for me. So thank you so much, Red Plum. Finally, we have the story of Nancy Vincent, an upright paddleboard instructor who used to give lessons out of her SUV. We're here today at Sup Westchester in Harbor Island Park to do some stand-up paddleboarding. Let's go get in the water. 
Nancy Vincent, a Westchester native, has been stand-up paddleboarding for the past nine years. In the summer of 2015, she became a certified instructor with the hope of bringing her passion to the community. It's just awesome. There's something about being in the water that's so calming to the soul, and it's such a fun sport and activity to do. You know, plus it's a great workout. Nancy began teaching lessons out of her SUV at local public access points throughout the county. Now she has her permanent location at Harbor Island in what she refers to as her SUP Shack. So all the information is on my website. If you log on to SUP Westchester, S-U-P, westchester.com, it lists all my pricings, all the classes that I have to offer, and you can click on schedule, and my schedule is listed there as well. As well as providing Mamaronek with a fun form of exercise, Nancy has also helped clean up our waters. Raising funds with Save the Sound, she has developed a custom medallion and has labeled over 300 storm drains, preventing further pollution into our waters. A resident of the village, Nancy's sub shack is open and ready to immerse Westchester in stand-up paddleboarding. So if you're in the area, definitely come by and check me out. I'm located right next to the Bait and Taco Shop in Harbor Island Park. It's a ton of fun to get out on the water with your family and with your friends. Do something a little different this summer. Come cool off at SUP Westchester this summer. For The Local Live, I'm Marcella Milder. We started tonight's show by thanking our volunteers, but we also want to thank you for watching The Local Live this year. Your tax-deductible donation will help keep us on community television as well as on the internet. Please visit our website at www.lmctv.org and click on the Donate button in the upper right-hand corner. We really appreciate any contribution. And by the way, your contribution could also be your time and talent. We always welcome new interns and volunteers. Contact us at thelocallive at lmctv.org and join our team. We love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year to everybody. I'm Mike Witch. See you next year for another edition of The Local Live. <laughs>